Hello everyone, and this is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling on March 1st, 2016, and, well, what do you, uh, what do you know in this one? Uh, there, there are three main focal points in the terms of storylines, and one more sub-storyline in there, and also something setting up for the... Or actually, a couple of sub storylines setting up for the next week. Um, what well, I'll start off with are kind of those uh, uh, one sub storyline, which is the whole decay and um, uh, havoc storyline, where havoc has been coming in and saying, "Oh, Rosemary was mine before she was yours," everything like that, and. The aspect has gone throughout the past couple weeks, and it's led to a match with Abyss going up against Havoc in a monster, basically no disqualification or a monster's ball type match. Um, it it's a little bit sad that more than likely it feels like this is probably going to be a one shot deal for Havoc. He's not he might not be continuing on after uh, after this match because that could have been an interesting storyline into the into the future with De with Decay and everything. Uh, I kind of like where they're going with Decay and uh, with Crazy Steve and Rosemary and Abyss. Uh, it's not bad. It's by no stretch of the imagination is crazy good but, or anything, but. Uh, it's been something for them, and they're actually trying something with Crazy Steve versus what they had had him do with the Menagerie a long time ago. So that's a good thing. Uh, a good thing on that sense. Um, so let's get kind of into the meat and potatoes of everything, and I'll talk about all the uh, extra storylines. Uh, they started the night off with Bobby Roode versus Kurt Angle. They've been doing the whole Kurt Angle farewell farewell tour, so he's been having matches with some of the people he's had some of his best matches with in TNA. Bobby Roode being this uh, being this week's example. Um, uh, again, another really good match from from them. A rather short one, nothing cr uh, overly long by any stretch of the imagination. They did a decent job in this match and then the, of course they put Kurt Angle over in this case uh, followed by what was a uh, one of those nice little heartfelt moments with uh, Bobby Roode James Storm in there uh, basically saying how much they appreciate Kurt Angle and everything and Kurt Angle basically saying hey he wanted one more match he, he knew his next match was his last for the next week but he wanted to see one more match like one more kind of dream style match which set up the Wolves versus Beer Money and I I'm glad to see this match uh, I think this match is going to be a really good one uh, but again in the terms of storyline setup and everything not much here because it's just more like a respect type area and they're going after the tag team titles so I mean simple storyline to lead to what's supposed to be a really good match and uh, the, at least that's what everybody's hoping to see um, but again nothing too much in the terms of storyline here it seemed like uh, nothing really to tease any kind of heel turns or anything like that, but uh, interested to see that match next week, and I'll be really, uh, I'll be really happy to see uh, Beer Money go up against the Wolves and have the tag team titles on there. I like how they, um, I did like the one line from the Wolves saying, "Hey, maybe you should keep the briefcase." because we're gonna win type area. I like that little aspect to it, but we'll see where they go with everything in there and see how everything goes with next week with that tag team title match. Um, Eric Young had a match with uh, one of the indie guys there. Uh, okay match between him and that, between him, uh, him and the, there, but uh, I forget his name off the top of my head and that's because I don't follow uh, a lot of the, their local indies there, so I might have known if I followed those, but I don't off the top of my head. Decent match between the two of them. We'll see how they continue on with everything. It looks like they're making the uh, King of the Mountain title almost like a TV title where it's defended on a weekly basis, uh, which isn't a bad thing, or at least close to a weekly basis. Like I said, not a bad thing there. I think that's a pretty good idea. Um, up next to t uh, talk about was the... Gail Kim Maria storyline. Uh, I like where they're going with this. I really, really do like where they're going with this, and it sets up, and it also sets up for next week with how they've been uh, putting over Jade recently uh, for Jade and Gail Kim. But the aspect that they, are, you know, they're doing, you have Gail trying to say, "Hey, this is what the knockouts are about. We're about wrestling. We're about this. We're about that," and they're kind of leaving Maria as like this untouchable person at this point where no one's able to get to her yet. Uh, and this is this is a good thing. Uh, I like that aspect. It builds that tension. It builds that area 
till they actually have some kind of match or something like that here in the very near future do they incorporate the dollhouse fully into this um the aspect of Jade attacking Gale at the uh, on the entrance ramp and then knocking her out with the title, I like that aspect. Uh, it you know they've been trying to set Jade apart from everyone else. Maybe they're going to drop her from the dollhouse uh, here in the very near future. But they're setting up the match with Jade going up against Gale Kim uh, the next week, and I liked where I liked where they went. Everything I liked the attack in there. I liked the. Um, you know, shortcut promo after the sh uh, after the title belt shot. I th I thought it was a good uh, good way of going, and it sets up perfectly for their match the next week. So they did a really really good job there. Uh, so this basically, uh, actually, this doesn't basically bring me that almost. Uh, I don't know why I would almost forget about this <laughs> in any way. But the Drew Galloway Michael Bennett match, not bad here. Now. The way they've been building everybody, you knew this match kind of had to end in disqualification because you can't necessarily have Michael Bennett lose a match, or not end in disqualification, but end in a not clean way. Uh, because, you know, Michael Bennett is just coming in. They're not going to necessarily have him lose quite yet, at least not to the, uh, at least not at the moment. They're not going to have him lose in some way where he can eke out a win, but you still have to kind of make Drew Galloway look strong in that sense. So they do that in this match as well. Uh, I like where they're going with this, and it continues on for a storyline somewhere down the uh, continuing on with that somewhere down the road here. So we'll see how far they go along with that to go uh, with with it as well. Um, uh, I like the match. I thought it was uh, it came off really good. Michael Bennett's pretty has been pretty good in his promo since coming in, and uh, the match with him and Drew Galloway has was a, a pretty darn good one. I like I I don't mind the uh, the roll up sneaky finish type uh, style for this one because you know like I said Michael Ben's just gotten in there uh, you got to keep Drew Galloway strong but you got to keep him going and getting wins and everything like that so I liked where they went with this I thought this was a good way of going uh, so this does bring me to the main storyline of the night which of course uh, involves EC3 and Matt Hardy again you have EC3 Going after Rockstar Spud for what he did the week before, costing the World Heavyweight title. But you have Rockstar Spud with Matt Hardy here. And here's the aspect. Uh, the pro you had the promo beforehand. Decent promo for Matt Hardy. I, 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 I do like him more as a heel character in there. Uh, you know, Rockstar Spud talking about what had happened in over the like over a year ago and everything like that. You had a quick promo backstage from EC3 after he attacks all three of them and sets up a non-sanctioned like basically street fight in there, which was later made mention. It's like this is a non-sanctioned match by Dixie Carter. You had a quick ones like he, he uh, you had EC3 even going giving Rockstar Spud props just for the fact that he waited a year to garner his revenge and everything like that. I like these little promos in there, and I like the aspect that you know uh, even even though at some points they had it, you know Rockstar Spud playing the coward, you still had Rockstar Spud trying to get one over on EC3 here because of what happened. A year ago, uh, he was you know eager to fight. He was actually eager to go after EC3 when he got out there uh, for a little bit until you know towards the end of it. Uh, even the aspect of them doing uh, having a full-on plan, making it even feel like you know Matt Hardy backs Rockstar Spud a little bit. Uh, you know EC3 is cheered by the fans, but not necessarily a face character, which I, uh, which was what I was really worried about that he would become a full face, which he didn't do which is a good thing uh, he's just being cheered where you know even these guys like Rockstar Spud you know they have a legitimate beef even where you know he tries to apologize later but that, that wasn't enough for them uh, type uh, type area so they have a legit beef there and you have Matt Hardy having his beef going into it and it was a pretty good way of going with everything and I like the aspect that it made it even seem like you know uh, where it, it, you know, Matt Hardy tries to make Rockstar Spud feel different than when he, uh, working under him than when he was working with EC3 and everything like that. So I liked those little snippets in there. Uh, so overall, this week's impact actually pretty good. Uh, not too many dull moments to the show, uh, in the terms of wrestling side. Storyline wise, a little bit lacking in some areas, but nothing too 
bad or overly crazy to really talk about. So, I mean, we'll see where they go with everything. They set up for the next week pretty decently. You have, you know, the knockouts title match. You have Bobby Lashley versus Kurt Angle and whatever storyline they're going to be putting up there for when Kurt Angle leaves and, and everything like that. And if they're going to be doing anything with Bobby Lashley in the terms of a storyline setup or is it just a match? Uh, like I said, the knockouts title match, the... Um, and uh, the tag team title match with Beer Money and the Wolves. And they even said, like, Eric Owens going to put the King of the Mountain title on the line again. So they had they set up for the next week pretty decently in there to go along with it. So that is my review this week for TNA Impact Wrestling. And I thank you guys for watching.